before arresting them. In Fredericksburg, Virginia, they're using high-speed cameras to analyze flashbang grenades at thousands of times faster than the human eye can see, mapping the characteristics so that SWAT teams know where and how to use them. Ken Malley owns E-Labs, a company that uses high-speed cameras to analyze flashbang grenades. E-Labs is an aerospace and defense testing laboratory. Whether it's simulating the harsh conditions of outer space or the freezing conditions of the Arctic, they can do it here. We test everything from a little router switch to um, a full-up, you know, explosive device. Like a flashbang grenade. Flashbang grenades are used when SWAT teams, let's say, go into a, go into a residence or something. And, they, and it's a grenade that's thrown in and has a flash of light and, and a very loud sound. And it's, most, it's made to disorient you. The flashbang grenade was first used by the military, and over time, local law enforcement started using them as well. But taking them from combat zones to urban neighborhoods created new problems. We had a customer come to us, and they said, hey, we use these grenades. They said, said we throw them into a room, it sets a couch on fire. This happens because flashbang grenades create a fire plume for a split second. If the plume is too small, it may be ineffective, too big, and it might set something on fire or cause serious injuries. We use high-speed cameras to map the plume size of the flashbang grenade which will be an indication of the chance that it might catch something on fire when it's in actual use. And because people have been seriously injured by these non-lethal grenades, can test for other dangers as well. One of the things that we do to show people the lethality of the devices is to take a hand, uh, we, we use a standard glove, fill it full of ballistic gelatin, put it around their grenade, and, it, and it, shows, it shows how much damage it could do to your hand. Ken heads to the warehouse where he demonstrates how a grenade is supposed to be used. Goes in your hand like that, pull the pin, you go to throw the grenade, spoon comes off, hammer strikes around, strikes the timer, one and a half seconds later, grenade goes off. It's, these are used in the heat of the moment, right as they're going into a house. So a lot of things can go wrong or, or go not as planned. For safety reasons, this test is conducted at a remote site. Ken designed everything about this test with safety in mind. I came down here with 10 fingers. I'd like to leave with 10 fingers. He's built a testing device called a pull rig. It's operated by an airline which he controls. It enables him to detonate the grenade remotely at a safe distance. With the pull rig ready to go, the first hand is attached. You know, if you were standing right here and it went off, I mean, you wouldn't be able to see for a while because of the bright flash of light and your ears would be ringing for, you know. I guess it's like a two hour concert in like, you know, half a millisecond. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna remove the safety from this end. Now that we're hot down at this end, we're gonna walk back here. To stay clear of flying debris, his detonating station is about 50 feet away. Everybody's got the safety glasses on. We'll do a countdown, a three, two, one. Then we'll turn the valve, and then we should have a nice explosion down there. Three, two, one. Hands gone, and uh, the charge went off. You can see in real time the plume lasts a fraction of a second. But with the high-speed camera, Ken can see it at 9,000 frames per second, revealing details you can't see with the naked eye. Unfortunately, in this test, the camera was too close to the explosion, and the plume goes out of frame, making it difficult to measure. But as far as dangers to the hand, this part of the hand, it's probably, if I put it against my hand, it's probably like that. That's what's left. The fingers are gone and part of the palm is gone, which was right in here, so. I, I know from past experience and other accidents that have, that have happened with these devices that uh, that's probably what you're gonna be left with. And they'll probably 
clean that up, they'll cut it back to maybe your wrist or something so you can get a prosthetic attached, but that's probably what you're gonna be left with. Ready? With the second test, they're hoping to get a better visual of the fire plume. An accurate measurement will help law enforcement decide if this grenade is suitable for breaching a residential home. Get on the ground! Right, Room clear! In order to measure the plume, Ken needs to reposition, reload, and reset the camera. We'll bend the pin straight. Okay, safe. The safety is removed and this grenade is ready. Everybody ready? Three, two, one. That's a good shot. This time, the camera is able to capture a better image of the plume. We can definitely tell by the size of that fireball how big it is. You know, we actually use, we use the post. We know the post is exactly six and a quarter inches wide. And then we take, we spot our software on that post and then move out to the plume size and, and the computer tells you the distance across. This plume ends up having a diameter of 4.1 feet. Ken will pass this data on to law enforcement, who will decide if it's safe enough for residential use. You don't use grenades every day. So you might use them maybe once a month or once every couple of months, or maybe only once a year. So if you had training, uh, maybe say once a month or once every quarter, you could see this, and, you know, it would just keep it fresh in people's minds that, hey, this, this is not a toy. It's less than lethal or non-lethal. It won't, might not kill you, but it's hard to be a cop with one hand or no hands or part of a foot missing or, you know, so it, it, it is a good training tool in that aspect. It shows you what can happen. We've all heard the saying, faster than a speeding bullet. Now, Beretta is making it possible for us to see that speeding bullet by using